when it comes to the fearless queens in the history of india we can recall only a few names that stand out prominently like rani lakshmi bai of jhansi we hardly know the names of an extraordinary queen who ruled kashmir for nearly half a century despite being born with a physical disability an exceptional beauty of kashmir is often portrayed as ruthless and someone who even killed her grandsons in some accounts she has even been portrayed as a witch this is how history remembers queen didda let's delve into the story of queen didda in this episode of gyan tales our knowledge of queen didda is quite limited due to the continuous eraser and forgetting of the 1200 year old story the 12th century chronicle raj tarangini by kalhana provides only a few details about queen didda according to kalhana didda was depicted as a merciless and power hungry queen with questionable moral standards in book 6 of raj tarangini she has been labeled as charanhina which means footless or lame born with a disability or perhaps affected by polio at birth she worked with a limp she grew up in an environment of ridicule and was deprived of parental love the other children in the palace often made fun of her disability she had no one except valja a loyal maid who cared for didda selflessly at the age of 26 didda was married to shem gupta of srinagaram shem gupta was a pleasure loving dissolute and the only thing that interested him were drinking women and hunting his once prosperous kingdom was falling into despair the feudal landlords and the soldiers continuously changed allegiance and reveled however he did something that would forever alter the course of kashmir's history he extended an offer to marry didda despite knowing her disability the purpose was to solidify his reign and establish a stronger connection between the realms of lohar and kashmir this historic union was solemnized in the year 950 ce upon her arrival in kashmir didda encountered a bitter reception from prime minister falgun and his daughter chandralekha who was first queen of shemgupta in truth chandralekha's marriage to shemgupta had been a cunning scheme devised by falgun to consolidate his authority after all who would willingly offer her daughter to a dissolute king like shemgupta however despite two years of marriage chandralekha had not yet born a male heir this only deepened shemgupta's disappointment and casted a shadow over falgun's political aspirations didda's marriage to shemgupta posed an even greater threat to falgun's hidden agenda as didda grappled with the situation the most trusted minister narvahan shared the kingdom's troubles including internal strife and rebellions didda realized that the kingdom was in a disarray and on the verge of collapse thus didda began to take political decisions and soon became the center of governance despite strong opposition from the prime minister falgun and chandralekha all this were possible as shengupta's love for didda was profound to the extent that even coins were minted with both their names which was quite unusual at that time according to kalhana didda had a such a big influence on her husband that he became known as humiliating appellation of didda shema or henpek Meanwhile a prophecy made by Chandralekha that Didda would find her place in harem after 9 months if she fails to deliver a baby boy started haunting Didda determined not to let go of her new found love and respect she sought help of Avinav Gupta a renowned sage and scholar it is said that Avinav Gupta blessed her with a baby boy Falgun tried many times to harm Didda and her unborn child but she outsmarted him each time Soon Didda gave birth to a son named Avimanyu. Everything was going smoothly for Didda, but destiny had planned something else for her. Shemgupta died during a hunt in 958 CE. As soon as the news broke out, Falgun along with the other members of the royal court pressurized Didda to perform sati, a self-immolation act. Even though Falgun knew that this would also lead to sacrifice of his daughter Chandralekha being the first queen of Shemgupta. Didda with the help of Narvahan managed the situation and refused to perform sati saying she had to leave to protect her son Avimanyu was then crowned but as Avimanyu was still a child 
Didda acted as a regent and effectively exercised sole power. As a female ruler in a patriarchal society, life was tough for Queen Didda. She had to face formidable opposition from her own ministers. Soon a series of revolts broke out led by Falgun. But Didda displayed a ruthlessness in executing not only the rebels who had been captured but also their families. Falgun, fearing for his life, fled for exile. She then decided to form her own elite army of young soldiers, the Ekangis, after a rigorous selection process. Narbahana swiftly rose to prominence as the most influential figure in the realm, drawing nearer to the queen with each passing day. Didda's extraordinary beauty and unwavering resolve had a profound effect on Narbahan, causing him to develop a strong feeling for her. One day during a discussion, Narbahan confessed his love for Didda, which took her by surprise. She felt betrayed and confused. Didda even publicly humiliated Narbahan in the royal court. Overwhelmed by guilt and rejection, Narbahan tragically ended his own life. After the absence of Narbahan, powerful feudal lord again started conspiring against Didda and this time situation went out of control. In an unexpected turn, Didda called back Falgun, who was living in exile. Falgun managed the situation by suppressing the feudal lords. Didda once again managed to secure her throne with her quick-witted action. But yet again, she faced the darkest nightmare a mother could imagine. In 972 CE, Avimannu, her only child, died. His minor son, Nandigupta, was crowned and Didda continued as regent. For a year, she immersed herself in building foundations to commemorate her son. By one estimate, she laid 64 foundations. Although Didda managed the affairs of her kingdom exceptionally well and she did everything to keep her people happy, but from now onwards, history remembers her as a witch queen. According to Kalhana, she killed Nandigupta by witchcraft in 973 CE. She then installed her other grandson Trivuvana at the throne in 973 CE, but killed him in the same fashion in 975 CE. Finally, she installed her last grandson Vimgupta to the throne in 975 CE. Vimgupta was a wise king, though very young. He had begun to understand his grandmother's ways and had grown suspicious for her. According to Kalhana, a local herdsman called Tunga who had found his way into Kashmir as a later career soon gained queen's favor and openly became her lover. She was even depicted as a queen who maintained numerous paramours to fulfill her desires. Kalhana described that Didda's desire for absolute power kept on increasing and after being assured of her safety by Tunga's support, Didda at last put Vim Gupta to death by torture and then ascended the throne. During the next 23 years, Tunga, who had been made prime minister, maintained an undisputed predominance. But eventually, as Didda was getting old, she feared for her kingdom's future as she saw the world changing. New religions and empires were emerging. Islam was spreading and powerful forces were shifting. Didda knew she needed strong leadership. Didda knew that Mahmud of Ghazni was a big threat to her kingdom. She had chosen her nephew Sangram Raja as Yuvraj and thus peacefully chosen the successor for the throne. Didda did the ceremony and soon passed away, leaving her kingdom to the hands of Sangram Raja and Tunga. They had promised Didda to protect Kashmir from Mahmud of Ghazni. When Mahmud attacked Kashmir, Tunga led the defense and won the battle. But after a few years, there was a rift between Sangram Raja and Tunga. The two former friends became enemies and Tunga and his son were killed. Sangram Raja had to face Mahmud of Ghazni again but without Tunga to help. But yet again, he won the battle, saving Kashmir once more. All this were possible as Didda laid a strong foundation for her kingdom that lasted for a long time. In spite of all the portrait defects of her character, Didda was far ahead of her time with the statesmanship instinct and political ability. Didda ruled as Queen Regent from 900 CE until her death in 1003 CE at the age of 79. She is one of the very few female monarchs in Indian history and is sometimes referred to as the Catherine of Kashmir after the ruthless Catherine the Great of Russia. 
As per the pages of the history, Didda was an immoral and debauched queen. But was she all this? Or the Kalhana's description in the Raj Tanangini, which was written 145 years after Didda's death, was influenced by patriarchal bias? Was it a tactic to discredit the powerful queen who had broken through the patriarchy? It still remains a question. What do you think? Write down in the comment section below. And also please like, share and subscribe to the Gantels.